Okay, so picture this. You're just chilling, scrolling on your phone, maybe checking your bank balance or you know, you're even stuck at a red light. It's all like super normal everyday stuff, right? Totally, yeah. But what if I told you that the software making all that stuff work could get caught up in like global politics and power struggles? Mm. We're talking about open source software and specifically Linux. Ah, Linux. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a big deal. And today we're going deep on a recent event that's, well, shaking up the tech world. Definitely a lot to unpack there. So for anyone listening who maybe isn't super deep in the tech world, can you give us a quick rundown of what open source software is and why this Linux thing is so important? Okay, sure. So open source software, it's basically code that anyone can see, use, change, you name it. Kind of like a giant online recipe book for software, right? Yeah, exactly. And people are constantly updating it, making it better. It's this massive online community effort. Cool. And so where do the Linux fit into all this? Linux, well, it's an operating system built on this whole open source idea. And let me tell you, it's everywhere. Everywhere. Like seriously, everywhere. We're talking smartphones, servers, even the systems that run traffic lights sometimes. It's a biggie. Okay, wow. So that's why when stuff happens with Linux, people kind of freak out a little. Yeah, it could have huge ripple effects. So let's get to this recent event. What exactly happened to Linux? Something about developers being kicked out, right? Yeah, so on October 18th, 2023, several Linux kernel maintainers got removed from the project. Kernel maintainers, those sound important. Oh, they are. These are not just your average contributors. They're like the gatekeepers of the entire operating system. Wow, okay. So not just... Anyone can be a maintainer then? Nope, definitely not. They review every single line of code that gets submitted. They ensure the quality, the stability. They're basically protecting the whole system from malicious code. So why on earth were these maintainers removed? Well, this is where things get um, complicated. A lot of these maintainers had connections to uh, Russia or Eastern Europe. Okay. And with all the U.S. sanctions in place, compliance means that well, involvement from anyone on the list is restricted. Restricted, meaning they got kicked off because of where they live. Pretty much, yeah, regardless of what they've contributed individually. That seems kind of harsh, doesn't it? There are definitely a lot of strong opinions on both sides. Yeah, this whole thing is raising some eyebrows, for sure. I mean, kicking people off because of their location. But it's not just about politics, right? Doesn't this also bring up some big questions about security, especially in open source? Oh, absolutely. This gets right to the heart of the open source dilemma. On the one hand, anyone can contribute, which is amazing for innovation, right? Yeah, totally. But on the flip side, you always have the risk of someone with bad intentions slipping in some harmful code. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. It's kind of like, imagine trying to keep a house secure when the blueprints are just out there, public for anyone to see. The good guys can use that knowledge to make things safer, but the bad guys can also exploit it. So is that like a constant problem with open source, trying to stay one step ahead of the bad guys? It's a constant balancing act. Mm. And this whole situation really highlights that tension. Okay, so it's like, is Linux even really more secure just because it's open source? Well, it's not that simple. That transparency does allow security researchers to find and fix vulnerabilities quickly. But at the same time, anyone looking to cause trouble can see those vulnerabilities, too. Ah, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Exactly. It's oh. like a never-ending game of cat and mouse. Okay, I'm starting to get it. So this whole Linux thing, it's not just about a few developers being removed, is it? Definitely not. This situation is part of a much bigger trend. Like what? Well, we're seeing governments all over getting more and more involved in technology, especially with software that has global reach. Is it? Kind of like a power struggle? Who gets to control the tech? It's definitely got that element to it. Reminds me of when strong encryption was restricted internationally. You remember that? Vaguely. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't that a big debate? Huge. This feels kind of similar, you know? Like, yeah. who gets to decide what software is allowed and where? So what could happen here? What are the potential consequences of all this? Well, for one thing, you could see the open source community start to fragment. Fragment. Yeah, like split up. Russian developers, for example, might focus more on their own national projects. There's this operating system called Astral Linux that's developed in Russia. Astral Linux, huh? Yeah. So instead of everyone collaborating globally, you might see separate ecosystems developing, almost like separate internets based on, uh, you know, where you're from. Wow, that's kind of scary, isn't it? Like a digital iron curtain or something? 
It's definitely something to think about. And for everyday people, it could mean slower innovation, more security risks, things like that. So even if you're not a coder, this could still affect you. Totally. Open source is everywhere these days, in our smartphones, our cars, even critical infrastructure like power grids. So basically, we all need to be paying attention to this, right? Absolutely. This isn't just a tech issue. It's a global issue. And the big question is, where do we go from here? Right. Like, is this the future of technology? More division, less collaboration? Or can we find a way to, you know, keep the open source spirit alive while also addressing these legitimate security concerns? Tough questions. No easy answer. Well, this has been a pretty intense deep dive. I've learned a lot, and I bet our listeners have too. If you're as fascinated by all this as we are, I highly recommend you dig a little deeper on your own. Yeah, definitely. We mentioned Astro Linux, that Russian operating system. Look into that and maybe do some reading on the history of encryption regulations. It's all connected. It's all a web for sure. This issue is far from over, folks. And the more we understand, the better equipped we'll be to navigate this increasingly complex tech landscape. Thanks for listening. Thanks, everyone.